I'll share my screen now. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay. So I, I extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Datta sir and uh, the team for offering me a, an opportunity to give a lecture on this series. So uh, I'll share my screen one second. So is my screen visible? Yes, visible, visible. Its slides are moving, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So good afternoon all. Today I will be talking about some basics of the structure of atmosphere. So I am uh, Dr. Divya working as a scientist in India Meteorological Department. So coming to the lecture, so the outline of my talk will be in this way. Uh, initially I will be discussing about the earth system and the atmosphere, then the composition of atmosphere and its major components. Then we will be seeing the vertical structure of atmosphere based on different properties and the variation of pressure and density in atmosphere. So this is a picture of solar system. So here you can see Earth is the third planet and it is a very unique planet from all other planets with only uh, the planet. Sorry, sorry to disturb you. Uh, your voice is coming very low. Oh, it's still, is it? It's uh, not coming as a... Uh... But for us, it is okay. Sunny, for us, it's okay. For us, it's audible. You can see the chat. The participants are saying voice is very low, and we are also feeling voice is low. Okay. Do you kindly so speak louder. Yeah, yeah, I'm speaking and louder. One second, I'll just switch off my fan. Is it better now? Sunny, is it better now? Okay, continue. Just speak a little bit loudly. Yeah. Yeah. So, if we see the solar system, Earth is the third planet. With a un it's a very unique planet because of its atmosphere and also because a large amount of liquid water. The only planet with liquid water and only planet with life. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Actually, I am extremely sorry to intervene in between. Uh, I am extremely sorry to today's speaker. Dr. Dibya, because due to some technical uh, uh, technical difficulties before she starts lecture, we could not introduce her formally. So, we can I get a few minutes from yes, the sir. speaker? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. No so, my uh, Dr. Dibya Surendran, she joined in the India Meteorological Department through UPSC UPSC, uh, UPSC exam as a direct class one officer. And after joining, she did very successfully one year training course, rigorous training course in the atmospheric science and general meteorology discipline. And after that, she is going to she is uh, being she has been groomed internally through our through IMD's internal faculty develop, development mechanism as a as a faculty resource person for the atmospheric physics, mainly atmospheric physics. And she is, uh, she is one of the best faculty in our training division, training division, teaching this very specialized subject. But she has the skill to, uh, to come down, to uh, downsize, to downsize the interpretation or the scale up the interpretation according to the uh, need of the customer. So uh, this, this lecture, this particular topic lecture, she has delivered at many places many places and she has a specialization, uh, uh, very much specialization in this topic. So, and we have invited and she has uh, responded it very positively. We are very much thankful to her. And with this small introduction, now I request Dr. Divya Surindran to start our lecture now itself. You have, you have lost two, three minutes. I assure you will be given that much two, three minutes at the end. You may start from the beginning, Dibya, if you don't mind. Dibya, madam, kindly start your lecture.
you are not audible uh, dr divya Uh, uh, am I audible now? Now, now we can hear. Yes, yes, okay. audible. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the screen is visible, right? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, the Earth system actually it does consist of basically five spheres. We consider one is hydrosphere, geosphere, cryosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. So. like the name suggest hydrosphere deals with all type of water bodies ocean water and all type of water bodies in the earth and geosphere is deals with different types of geological activities different types of rock tectonic motion and all this will come under geosphere and biosphere is the sphere where we live or which is the which includes all type of flora and fauna all type of living organisms and cryosphere is the sphere uh, is with uh, uh, um, it discuss about the ice uh, sea ice and glaciers in the uh, earth and atmosphere is the sphere which deals with the air and the air we breathe and the weather activities occurring so these five spheres are interacting each other so it is very difficult to predict any system or any weather uh, just we are, we are focusing on one at uh, one sphere so if we are just monitoring atmosphere and we are trying to study something it is not complete so all these spheres are interacting each other in different process through different process so understanding the earth system means it you have to understand each of the sphere in a very detailed manner so coming to the earth atmosphere so earth atmosphere is a very thin veneer we can say it is a very uh, if we compare the size of earth because the size the earth's radius is around 4600 uh, km and in that only 100 km it is actually we are counting as atmosphere and in that 100 km or also only 5 km is the habitable atmosphere so if we consider if we take the ratio by 5 by 6400 it is coming very it is a very small quantity so it will be if we consider the earth as a uh, orange so the atmosphere is similar to the peel of that orange so well while comparing to uh, earth total earth the atmosphere has a very thin structure but it even it is a very thin structure it has lot of importance in all the activities related all the activities or all the processes happening on earth uh, now i am audible right there is no issue it possible uh, kindly speak somewhat louder because still some people are uh, writing in the chat box that it's not audible okay so i'm speaking louder actually please take mic near if possible yeah yeah it's near only it's near only shirish otherwise i have to remove the mic and talk no problem continue continue okay so atmosphere is an envelope of air it is surrounding the earth and it is bound to earth by the force of gravity so uh, if there is no gravity there is no possibility of an atmosphere so earth gravity is actually pulling the atmosphere towards the surface that's why we have a atmosphere and it is extending from the surface surface to the space and while it is going upward when it is uh, when it is moving upward the density and the uh, number of particles will reduce and the uh, the atmosphere is actually Uh, it, uh when we start from surface to higher lat higher uh, altitude the density will decrease so we cannot actually say there is a very uh, uh, we can we cannot say there is a exact boundary for the atmosphere so at, uh, it is actually uh, uh, smoothly it is blended with the uh, space uh, and it is uh, we cannot define an exact boundary there is no real top for the atmosphere so coming to the composition of atmosphere basically earth atmosphere is consist of uh, different types of gases and also some solid and uh, liquid particles suspended in the air they are known as aerosols so if we take the uh, composition of uh, atmosphere so the major portion is nitrogen and oxygen so nitrogen is coming around 78 percentage and oxygen is coming 21 percentage so altogether 99 percentage of earth atmosphere 
is from nitrogen and oxygen so nitrogen is actually removed from uh, it is produced and removed in the atmosphere through biological processes and these are the this is the cycle of nitrogen fixation and how the denitrification is occurring and it is coming back to the atmosphere it's all through biological processes similarly oxygen is also uh, it's it is given it is uh, coming to the atmosphere and going back from the atmosphere through by uh, organic matter decays it is all all through all organic processes so and through photosynthesis we as we all know the oxygen will be released and uh, animal and all the uh, animals and other human beings taking this oxygen and carbon dioxide is released so this is a continuous process in atmosphere in this way the cycle is balanced and the remaining com component if we consider the uh, 78 and 21 the remaining one percentage is known as trace gases all other gases are uh, combinedly it is only com it is reaching around one percentage only so these gases are trace gases because their uh, quantity is very less in the atmosphere even though they are very less the quantity wise they are less in atmosphere they all have their own roles in the atmosphere very important roles so Uh, based on the composition we have an classification like permanent gases and variable gases so permanent gases are gases which does not have any change in day to day so already we have discussed oxygen and nitrogen so these gases the amount if we can if we uh, take amount some amount of gas from one area and we measure the composition will be same the composition the composition of nitrogen to oxygen or oxygen to nitrogen ratio will be same throughout in some cases some gases they have a variation like from day to day they have a variation morning to evening they have a variation so that type of gases are known as variable gases so the basically the variable gases include water vapor because water vapor has uh, its own uh, uh, means mechanism to come into the atmosphere through evaporation and it is uh, taken back through the rains and again it will come so it depend it is not uh, very uh, we cannot say it is a very fixed quantity so like humidity we say the humidity varies uh, from day to day also from season to season on a rainy season we will have more moisture in the atmosphere or more water vapor so this is these are variable gases and more some more information about variable gases so the most important variable gases is the variable gases water vapor so water vapor we can say it is the energy which is driving more, almost all the processes all the weather processes in the atmosphere and these are the, this uh, water vapor is the basic uh, it is the basic ingredient for the uh, clouds and precipitation from the water vapor only the clouds is uh, developing and the precipitation is happening and uh, it is very much important because it is a major greenhouse gas we will discuss what is green greenhouse gas and what is greenhouse effect so next second variable gas is co2 co2 is the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide also it is basically entering into the atmosphere through decay of vegetation volcanic eruptions respiration and all so these all are actually natural sources of co2 and they are removed from the atmosphere by photosynthesis because in the photosynthesis they have absorbed that co2 and it will release oxygen as a by product but due to the human activities and increase in human activities and a uh, lot of fossil fuel em emissions and deforestation mm, the uh, amount of carbon dioxide actually it has increased significantly if we compare the pre industrial season to pre industrial era to this era so it was nearly 280 parts per million uh, around 1750 but now it is 400 recently it is reaching around 420 ppm uh, the recent records are showing so this is actually it's a uh, alarming because the uh, it is also a greenhouse gas it is actually increasing the temperature of the earth and coming to the uh, other uh, type of variable gas it is methane methane is also a greenhouse gas and it is also a variable gas and it is also uh, means natural sources more than the natural sources man made sources are increasing so it is again it is increasing the amount of methane in the atmosphere and the uh, the last component or the most important component we can say ozone 
so ozone actually it is also a variable gas but ozone is the most uh, important or most uh, uh, prominent uh, ozone is uh, we can seen in the stratosphere that i will discuss in the coming slide and ozone in the lower layer of atmosphere normally consider as a pollution that uh, if we breathe ozone it is not good for us so this is also a variable gas okay so uh, as we discuss greenhouse effect and greenhouse gases uh, i know almost everybody knows what is a greenhouse effect uh, and greenhouse gas but just just for an information i am just adding so some gases in the atmosphere they have a property to absorb and re emit the uh, infrared radiation coming from the uh, earth surface so this uh, this particles or this gases will uh, absorb this uh, uh, heat producing infrared radiation and it will keep the atmosphere warm so this process is known as greenhouse effect so in the presence of greenhouse effect only the we have a the global temperature have a livable temperature of 15 degree celsius if if we don't have greenhouse effect or greenhouse gases in the atmosphere the at temperature uh, uh, might have gone uh, it actually it will be uh, nearly around minus 18 degree celsius so it the uh, greenhouse effect and greenhouse gases are important then why we are worried about this greenhouse gases actually naturally occurring greenhouse gas is gases and naturally occurring greenhouse effect is very much essential for the earth but what is actually now happening due to the increased activ uh, human activities of increased production of greenhouse gases the natural greenhouse effect uh, is enhanced so it is more uh, the activity uh, the and there is an enhancement in the greenhouse effect so what is happening there are more uh, more amount of greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere and they are actually trapping more and more heat energy and it is leading to the uh, uh, global warming or we whatever we are discussing today the uh, temperature of the earth is increasing significantly so uh, there is a uh, like there is a misunderstanding like greenhouse effect is bad but it's not like that greenhouse effect is very much essential for the normal living of earth atmosphere but enhanced greenhouse effect and increased amount of greenhouse gases are actually uh, causing the uh, greenhouse uh, more greenhouse effect or uh, it is leading to the global warming scenario so coming to the non gases constituents so uh, till now we have discussed about the gases gases present in the present in the atmosphere so there are uh, other than gases there are other particles also present in the atmosphere they are basically known as aerosols so aerosols are tiny liquid or solid particles which are suspended in the atmosphere so they this can be dust particles sea sprays and microbes so they can be coming into that uh, from different sources of nature they can come to the atmosphere so volcanic eruption is an example of um, producing large amount of aerosols into the atmosphere and sea sprays whenever there is a sea spray so some amount of uh, solid or liquid particles are suspended it is uh, released into the atmosphere and it will suspend in the atmosphere and they also act, they also has a very important role in atmospheric uh, studies uh, and other type of uh, we can con consider them pollutants because they are known as uh, particulate matter uh, uh, like all type of uh, um, fossil fuel burning factory outlets and all are producing some amount of particulate in, uh, ejection of uh, particulate matter into the atmosphere so they are also uh, they are also present in the atmosphere so these actually this uh, even though they are in very minute quantity comparing to the solid uh, comparing to the ga gaseous uh, partic gaseous uh, gases in the atmosphere they also have a very important role they are actually uh, i'm not going to the detail into the more details they are actually it, this uh, uh, this aerosols are very much important for the cloud formation and also they are have a very important role in the radiation balance of atmosphere like how uh, how the tem uh, temperature of a particular area is increasing or decreasing so all these are related to the presence of uh, presence and the type of aerosols present over that particular region so now we will come to the vertical structure so basically there are different types of classification for the uh, atmosphere 
so in each, uh, first i will discuss about the vertical structure based on the composition so based on the composition already we have discussed uh, nitrogen oxygen are the most important constituents we find in the earth surface and they are known as uh, permanent gases and uh, as we know the earth is actually how the earth is getting heated i'll just go to the next slide and again i will come back uh, sorry it's not there so uh, the first sphere we can say based on the composition it is homosphere so homosphere is actually the uh, it's a part of atmosphere it is extending from the surface to 100 km and it is character the main characterize characterization of this layer is the uniform mixing uniform mix mixing means uh, the earth is getting heated from the bottom so when the sun's radiations are coming to the earth's atmosphere the earth's surface will absorb this radiation and it will re-radiate as infrared radiation so the source of energy the thermal energy is from uh, base or the bottom of the atmosphere so what will happen if if the earth gets heated there will be the air starts warming and there is a uniform mixing of air in mixing will happen in the atmosphere so this mixing is actually this mi mixing we can visible this type of mixing in the homosphere due to the homogeneous mixing of this air so what will happen the composition of uh, atmosphere will be similar in the homosphere so any part of at homosphere if we take some amount of what uh, some amount of air and we see the composition the percentage of that each gases will be similar M maybe the quantity will be uh, different but the percentage or the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen oxygen to argon this ratio will be similar in the homosphere so that's why it is known as homogeneous uh, homogeneous mixing is happening so that's why it is known as homosphere so in this figure you can see the homosphere this is the height and the x-axis it is the height and y-axis it is the volume so in the home in the homosphere actually the all gases actually having a uniform structure like if we consider nitrogen the red line so it has the volume is actually in this ring and after that it has a dip and if we consider oxygen also in till 100 kilometer it does not vary much because because of the homogeneous mixing in this layer the atmosphere will remain the composition will remain stable so coming to the next sphere which is known as the heterosphere heterosphere is actually it is above the homosphere it it actually begins at 100 kilometer altitude and it is uh, extending towards the outer atmosphere okay so here what is happening the mixing so uh, all the energy heat is coming from the uh, bottom of the uh, earth or it is from the earth surface so the heat will not be uh, reaching towards the uh, heterosphere so what will happen if there won't be any homogeneous mixing is happening so here what will happen is that the all the uh, gases will be mm, distributed based on their molecular weight so the gases or the any component which has a molecular uh, which has a more molecular weight it will be settled at the bottom and above that the lighter and uh, more lighter will be at the top in that way it will be distributed so heterogeneous atmosphere or hetero heterosphere is basically depends upon the uh, based upon their molecular weight they will be distributed so this is the one basic uh, classification of atmosphere based on the composition like homosphere and heterosphere homosphere means there is a homogeneous mixing and heterosphere means there is no mixing all all the components are distributed based on their molecular weight so just before going to the thermal structure of atmosphere i just uh, talk about the uh, rotation and revolution i know most of the people know what is rotation and revolution so uh, earth is rotating around the sun so this uh, rotation and revolution is actually giving us day night and season so earth has an inclination of 23 uh, 23 and a half degree it is not it is not uh, actually in a right angle there is an inclination so what will happen uh, when the uh, sun sun rays are coming so the it will strike uh, the sunlight will be striking more perpendicularly over this region like tropical region near the equator 
So, these regions will be receiving mo more amount of solar radiation, more amount of energy and coming to the uh, higher latitudes, there will be a, the angle will be, there will be an angle with respect to the sunlight. So, the uh, amount of radiation reaching this latitudes will be different. Okay. So, uh, since we are in the uh, uh, tropical region, tropical region means the equator to 30 degree north and 30 degree south that is known as tropical region. So, here we will be getting more amount of solar radiation comparing to the uh, mid latitude. Mid latitude we uh, consider from 30 to 60 in both uh, direction like uh, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. Okay. And in case of uh, season wise if we see uh, in the summer season we know we will be getting more amount of radiation, uh, more amount of sunlight over uh, northern hemisphere and winter season uh, the, the amount of so, uh, sunlight, the duration of sunlight will be less. So, that period we will be having less amount of solar energy. Okay. Okay. Now, coming to the vertical structure of atmosphere, the thermal structure of atmosphere we can say, the atmosphere is uh, divided into basically four layers based on the temperature structure. So, it is a very complex structure. Uh, why we want to study this structure is that the, uh, to understand this structure will help us to understand different types of weather process happening in the atmosphere. So, we will uh, go one by one. So, the basic four layers are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere. So, troposphere is the lowest sphere or it is the nearest uh, atmosphere, it is the nearest sphere to the earth's surface or we can say we all are living in the troposphere. So, if we consider the entire atmosphere, troposphere is coming around uh, from surface to 10 kilometer. Okay. So, here we can see, uh, I will just... Uh, it is coming around 10 kilometer and the pressure near the surface, the pressure is, uh, it, is uh, uh, it is varying from 1000 mil, uh, millibar to 250, sorry, 1000 hectopascal to 250 hectopascal and almost the 3 by 4, 75 percentage of mass of the atmosphere is in this troposphere, in this layer and uh, as compared uh, with respect to uh, human beings, troposphere we can say it is the most important layer because all day-to-day -day activity, all our day-to-day -day activities, all weather are happening in this uh, troposphere. So, if we see the stru temperature structure of troposphere, what will happen? The temperature is actually decreasing when the height increases. So, this decreases in scientifically it is known as lab state or the decrease of temperature with respect to height. So, this decrease is around 6.5 degree Celsius in every <laughs> kilometer there will be a decrease of 6.5 degree Celsius. So, why the, why there is a decrease in uh, temperature? So, we already discussed this thing. So, earth is actually receiving radiation from the sun and the earth surface is uh, absorbing this radiation and it is re-radiating. So, there are different types of heating mechanism in the atmosphere. One is conduction and another one is convection and all. I am not going to the more details of that, but one thing is that the earth surface is the heat energy for the atmosphere. So, when we go away from the heat source, what will happen? The temperature starts decreasing. So, the temperature of the uh, troposphere is decreasing with respect to the height. In every 1 kilometer, there is, a, uh, there is almost a decrease of 6.5 degree Celsius and it depends upon the different components of uh, this. This is not a fixed, we cannot say. There are, uh, there may be some here and there uh, differences, but on an average, the temperature is decreasing with respect to height. The troposphere has a temperature decreasing with uh, with height. So the height of troposphere is coming around 10 kilometer, and this is also the boundary of uh, troposphere to the next sphere that is known as stratosphere. It is known as tropopause. It is the boundary between troposphere and stratosphere. So, this is a, uh, this boundary we normally say it is around 10 kilometer, but it also varies with respect to the uh, regions. Like over a tropical region, there will be more amount of uh, heating, 
there will be more amount of convection and all so what will happen the tropopause height will be more over a tropical region comparing to the polar region polar region the height is uh, height of the tropopause will be less comparing to the tropical region okay so the boundary between the troposphere and stratosphere it is known as tropopause okay somebody is talking so the next topic is excuse me monica madam very sorry sorry yeah okay so stratosphere is the next layer of atmosphere the stratosphere means it is actually the strat uh, stratus means that it is a layered atmosphere layered structure so stratosphere is the next layer it is just above the troposphere and it is actually extending from 10 to 50 km in the atmosphere and here we can see uh, it is not similar to troposphere the temperature structure of stratosphere is actually it is increasing with respect to height so the why there is an increase with respect to height the temperature is increasing it is because the the ozone layer is present in this uh, stratosphere so maximum amount of ozone o3 is find in between 15 to 30 kilometer so uh, ozone production and ozone destruction it will release some amount of energy heat energy so it will actually it is the heat source of stratosphere so comparing to troposphere the temperature will be increasing with respect to height so the uh, it is mainly because of the presence of ozone so still it is uh, even though we are telling it is increasing the increase is not beyond zero degree celsius and also if we can see it is reaching a uh, from here it is minus 60 and it is reaching to zero so in that way it is increasing so ozone already we have discussed ozone is a uh, it's a O3 means th three molecules of oxygen and it is a uh, it is very much important the ozone layer because ozone is opaque to the UV radiation specifically UVB radiation so if ozone layer is not there the uh, harmful UV radiation will come to come to the earth surface and it will damage our uh, it, it will be uh, it, uh, very very much harmful for human beings and also for the agriculture so the presence of ozone layer is very much important so what will happen when uv is combining with o2 uh, this reaction i have given when uv is combining with the molecular uh, oxygen it will separate into uh, two oxygen atom and again in presence of a catalyst molecule it is combined with the uh, another oxygen atom and it will produce o3 and again this o3 will dissociate with the help of uv so this is a continuous process happening in the stratosphere so this will produce some amount of heat energy in the uh, stratosphere so this is the main source of uh, uh, heat energy in the stratosphere it will warms the stratosphere okay so ozone layer is very much important because of the presence of ozone only we are not getting harmful uvb radiation then coming to the next layer it is known as mesosphere mesosphere is actually uh, sorry in between the there is a uh, boundary between this mesosphere and stratosphere which is known as stratopause it is coming around 50 kilometer we can see the temp, uh, the pressure is again it is reduced to one hectopascal or one millibar uh, the that means the amount of molecules amount of particles in the atmosphere is reducing with respect to height so mesosphere is actually the third layer of atmosphere and it is the layer from uh, 50 to 80 kilometer above the surface so we can consider this layer as a middle atmosphere uh, so it is the second region of uh, atmosphere uh, where again a decline of a decline of temperature with respect to height so what will be the reason for declining the temperature uh, the reason is that uh, stratosphere is the heat source of mesosphere so whatever he there were a energy heat energy is in this sphere so when it is moving away from this heat energy source then uh, it will be uh, the temperature will be decreasing with respect to height so again it has a similar type of temperature structure to the troposphere the temperature is decreasing with respect to height and 
this we, uh, when we reach the top portion of the mesosphere uh, that is the uh, that is known as mesopause or it is known as the coldest region of atmosphere here the temperatures are reaching around minus 80 degrees celsius so this is the region uh, the temperature the coldest maximum minim, uh, the highest minimum temperature recorded in the atmosphere so it is reaching around 80 kilometer and around 80 to minus 80 to minus 90 degrees celsius of temperature recorded here so and beyond the mesosphere um, the temperature is increasing or that region is known as thermosphere thermosphere is from 80 kilometer and it is extending to 140 and it is actually blending with the uh, interstellar space and uh, in that way it is continuing so uh, again here the temperature is increasing because here we can see the uh, due to the uh, absorption of uh, short wave radiation whatever radiation coming from the sun this uh, particles will molecules will absorb this radiation and they will dis dissociate and mostly the, it will be in the form of ions and uh, atoms in this region so here because of the absorption of short wave radiation and uh, this this layer the temperature will uh, increases with respect to height so if we see uh, the uh, entire structure we can see the auroras aurora it is known as northern lights or southern lights this type of uh, phenomena are observing in the thermosphere actually these are produced by the interaction of uh, solar wind uh, there, there is a cycle solar cycle of uh, 12 years so uh, whenever there is a solar wind uh, strong winds are coming from the sun and if they interact with the earth magnetic sphere so there will be some interaction and this will produce the beautiful uh, structures called as aurora and auroras are visible in the thermosphere and it is visible uh, basically in the uh, polar region not over the tropical region it's uh, difficult to visible so uh, and stratosphere we can say uh, the almost our uh, flights are uh, flying in the troposphere and uh, sometimes in stratosphere and mesosphere we can see the meteor showers and all so in this way the different layers of atmosphere based on temperature are uh, uh, troposphere stratosphere mesosphere and thermosphere and last one is the exosphere so exosphere it is the most distant atmospheric region from the earth surface so actually after the thermosphere or it, it is actually start from thermopause or exobase it is the, this boundary is known as uh, in between thermosphere and exosphere this boundary is known as thermopause and exobase and it is from starting from around 250 kilometer to and uh, furthermore so this is known as the exosphere so exosphere uh, we can see actually uh, so if we see the structure of atmosphere so here is the troposphere it is coming around uh, the all flights and mount everest we can see in this layer and or stratosphere here here also some flying activities are happening and weather balloons are also uh, reaching till stratosphere and taking observation and meteor showers we can see in the mesosphere and thermosphere is this is we can see already i have told the auroras and the international space stations are also located in the thermosphere and beyond that it is known as uh, exosphere and it is uh, uh, smoothly it is blending with the uh, outer atmosphere or it is uh, the space we whatever we are saying uh, it, uh, it is blending with the uh, interstellar space okay so this is just a uh, uh, figure which is showing the uh, how the pressure is varying pressure and density is varying with respect to the altitude so if we see uh, already we have discussed the maximum amount of particles or maximum amount of air molecules are present near to the earth surface as we go above or as we go higher and higher altitude the amount of uh, molecules present will uh, also decreasing so since the amount of molecules is uh, decreasing so the air density will also decreasing so air density and air pressure will also decrease because pressure means the amount of force exerted by the uh, exerted over a surface so when the air density is reducing the number of molecules will be less so the pressure uh, will reduce so if we see the chart if we see the uh, 
the variation of pressure and uh, density with respect to height it is a uh, decreasing trend decreasing it is decreasing with respect to the altitude similarly the pressure also varying with respect to it is also uh, decreasing with respect to the height so if we reach around a 5 km and all the pressure will be around 500 millibar that means it is almost half of the surface it is around 1012 or 1000 if we consider as 1000 millibar by 5 km altitude the half of the pressure is reducing so in this way the structure the vertical structure of atmosphere is uh, defined so thank you uh, is there any question you can ask so i have given a very brief introduction uh, regarding the structure of atmosphere is there any question you can ask I'll stop sharing. I think there are some questions in the chat box. Okay. Uh, in the mesosphere, some amount of clouds are seen. How is it possible? Okay. So, normally mesosphere, uh, this type of clouds are known as nautilucent clouds. So, clouds are uh, possible in mesosphere, but it is very rare comparing to uh, troposphere and stratosphere. So the clouds are basically, these clouds are basically consist of uh, very small amount of water vapor or moisture and more with the, this meteor dust and all. So they are very rare, but it is happening. But it, it is not giving any type of, uh, what do you say, any type of weather or precipitation. Uh, there is no, uh, we don't have any influence of that particular uh, clouds, but the, there are clouds observed in the mesosphere. They are particularly known as nautilucent clouds and they are very, they have a very beautiful structure. So, uh, it is possible to happen based upon the availability of moisture and uh, the, mostly it is consist of uh, dust particles and meteor dust and all. So, some amount of, uh, whenever there is a possibility of getting some amount of moisture, there are chances of forming uh, clouds. Okay, my question, uh, why how? Okay, uh, how does the structure of atmosphere changes from equator to poles? Okay, actually, already I have told the atmosphere, uh, the earth has a, earth is not a very spheric, it, it does not have a very co complete sphere or spherical structure. It has a, the shape of earth is known as geoid. Actually, it is bulged towards the equator and slightly suppressed over the poles. So, what will happen? the already we have seen in uh, in the case of troposphere and all tropopause and all the uh, the tropopause height or the uh, troposphere height will be more all the, if we consider the entire atmospheric height the it will be more towards the uh, more will uh, the it will be more over the equator region while comparing to the poles so it when we coming from uh, when we traveling from equator to poles the height will reduce because uh, the gravity is also more over the polar region so it will have a uh, great pull towards the polar region so it will vary from equator to poles there is d definitely there is a variation from equator to poles structure will vary i hope it's clear Any other questions? Otherwise, I will stop here. You can even mail also. If you have any questions, I will give my email ID. I will post here. So, you can send. If there is further, if there is any queries, you can uh, send. And ma'am, would you be sharing the slides? Actually, I'll check with the organizers. I think they are sharing all the slides, uh, all the PPTs. So I will share with the organizers. You can get this PPTs, no problem. Oh, 
ओके इफ देयर आर मोर क्वेश्चंस आई एम हैंडिंग ओवर टू सवाल करते सर और शिरीष यस दिस इज पल्लवी दिव्या मैम थैंक यू या थैंक यू फॉर द लवली लेक्चर सो नो मोर क्वेश्चंस एनी फ्रॉम एवरीवन एंड सिंस यू हैव गिवन द ईमेल आईडी सो आई थिंक दे विल Uh, any other further queries they can email you any time yeah sure any time and i hope you are sh- sharing the slides and i will share with the organizers sir yes yes surely ma'am surely ma'am yes thank you so okay. much yes. okay so thank you okay